Uh, good evening. I'd like to call a regular select board, Berlin Select Board uh, meeting to order for Monday, June 5th, 2023. Uh, with us tonight on my far left is Flo Smith. To my right is Tor Nelson and Joe Staub. I'm Brad Town, and with us also is Dave Sawyer uh, by way of Zoom. Vince Connie, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Um, addition or changes to the agenda? I have none. <laughs> uh, public comment. Hearing none. Discussion on changing the classification of Town Highway 74 in Browns Mills extension. So you'll you have in your package photos of the locations of those. We did uh, briefly talk about those a couple of meetings ago. Um, you'll also see some of the statutes in there that we'll have to uh, go through uh, the process should the board elect to go that way. And I'll let, uh, I'll let Tim answer the questions as to the, why these were, were selected. And So the one that goes across the railroad tracks. Town Highway 74, 74 from Route 12, yep. Yeah. That just dead ends at the railroad track. And Tim, you say there's just no place to turn the trucks around. Backing out into Route 12, and it's yeah. becoming more dangerous as there's more traffic on the road than there ever has been. And that we have to back out into the highway, and you're backing out blind with 25 feet of truck sticking out there before you can Sweet. see. Okay. And on Brown's mill extension, what little bit you're having to plow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. no place to put snow is. is Not is really. There. No, the trees have grown up, but it's become narrow. Is anyone here on these? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. My name is Mark Dincheco. I live at 56 Browns Mill Road Extension, which I believe is the red circled area on your map. Sorry, I don't have access to these documents, so I can't see exactly what you're doing. Feel free to, if you want to take a look. Yes. Uh, so clearly I'm here to advocate for the town to continue plowing the extension and taking care of that piece of road. Uh, it's an important point of ingress, of course, and egress from my property. Um, in no prior year, and in talking to my neighbors in no prior decade, has there been an issue raised concerning how, the, how that portion of the road is plowed or if it should be plowed or not. There are several areas to push the snow. One is straight ahead as you come off the bridge. There's a summer camp up there, but it hasn't been occupied in quite a while, so the town has regularly put snow there. And then turning left up into my property, as I've communicated to the town several times, um, and has been um, the practice over decades that snow is pushed up the hill and off to the side. A portion of that land is town land, and a portion of that land is my land. I've, sing I've signaled to the town in writing this past year that I'm 100% OK with pushing that snow into my property. No problem at all, because on the plus side, it allows me to get out. Um, it allows fire, ambulance, utilities, oil delivery, et cetera, to get in. The town were to cease doing that, and I would, of course, have to pick up maintaining that portion of the road, which I work for Green Mountain Power. I am frequently out on trouble calls at all hours, at all times. So being able to get in and out of that portion of the road is extremely important to me so that I can attend to critical infrastructure issues. Um, and in the notice I received in the mail, it indicated that there was a safety issue. 
I'm not aware of any prior safety issues or incidents, so I would be, of course, happy to hear uh, what incidents may have occurred, when they occurred, and what the type of incident may have been. Of course, working for a utility, I'm very, very familiar with safety protocols, especially around large vehicles, and so I'm curious to understand uh, what exactly the issue might be. Well, I think, I think probably when it comes down to the uh, safety issues is just backing, it's, it's, you know, one thing if you go up and turn around and come back, but I think just backing the trucks out into a travel portion of the road was what was brought up. I don't think that portion of the road would be fairly described as a traveled portion of the yeah. road. There's a T there, so going up and coming back or coming back and uh, wheeling to the right is completely possible. And as a matter of precedence, it has been done that way for decades without incident. Yeah. You said there was a camp up there? Yes. Straight ahead. You just and keep going it's straight. Not, not on that one. It's, it's where your thumb is. Here. The, right here. The, the main road continues this way and there's a camp up here. Not, not, not on the extension road. Oh, it's up here. Right so the bridge and goes straight through and okay. up, up in here. Oh, okay. Which is the entrance to the camp. There's a driveway up there. Right. <clears throat> the camp road, how long is that up to the camp yeah. itself? I mean, that's a private driveway. I'd say it's 100 yards long. Okay, I'm just curious. And then my portion of the extension is probably 40 to 50 feet. And then it picks up at, at my property line. Now, your portion of the road, you, you plow that or you have it plowed? Yeah. I do it myself. There was an original email. Vince doesn't have it on, and I have it. I probably have it on mine from them last year. Um, when that's causing property damage, uh, hitting trees, um, leaving debris, which kind of stems some of this. Um, yeah, because that was. November, December, I think it was one of the first times that we plowed when it was extremely soft. And uh, I think in the email that there was some property damage so that we pushed a stone wall over and some other stuff in that email. Where's the stone it. wall? Somewhere is, I guess, where that top arrow is to your left. Up here? Yeah. Right here? Somewhere okay. down in there, yeah. I believe you referred to it as there was a seating area and a small fireplace, outdoor summer area. But I would be happy to produce that email and show you that uh, uh, I did not describe the destruction of a stone wall. It is true that the plow has gone beyond the end of the extension into my property and pushed the snow into that area. Um, in this, in the heavy wet snowstorm of December. Um, I agree, the road was in poor, soft shape at the time, and so the result of that was, for the first time since I've lived there, a lot of rocks, like big rocks and debris, got pushed into that area, and it did affect a tree that is sitting right at that wall. This tree has since died, but um, I don't care, honestly, <laughs> I'll, I'll cut the tree down. Um, so no... Uh, and, and in the same email to the town, I wrote several emails to the town, I also indicated that I am happy to work with the town in any capacity that they choose to find a place to push the snow, accommodate any turnaround or space needs that they need to trim or move anything that's necessary uh, so that we can continue to keep that portion of the road open. Out of curiosity, what's the sign on the tree? It's a posted sign from the prior owner. Mr. Chair, um, 
looks to me like before we can do anything uh, further as far as the formal reclassification, we'll need to do a site visit of uh, both yep. locations. I recommend we go ahead and do that. Um, and based on you know, the property, when it's possible, we can just drop it right there or come up with another agreement, or if we need to move forward, we can. But I think um, scheduling the site visit, uh, I think, would be a good way to go. That's fair. Yeah. So, that's in line with the, the process that we need to follow anyway. Yeah. My statute is uh, a site visit. Absolutely. And then another hearing. So, what's our next meeting look like? Right now, there's only a couple things on the agenda. Do you want to do it at the next meeting? Oh, well, actually, I think, right I think I saw something 30 days notice. Yep. So, looking at early July. Yeah, be the first meeting in July, actually, for the 30 day notice. You're right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to get the notice out right off. Yep. I can get a notice out tomorrow. Okay. For a site visit. And work, I'll work with Mr. Mark on his availability. Yep, I can be available anytime. Typically, you want to try to have it separate, or do you want to have it at the next, the first meeting in July? Which would be well, I'd like to get this taken mm -hmm. care of. Um, I would say, I don't know if you want to do it, if we did a separate one, it would probably be more convenient. 30, 30 days actually puts us out to July 5th, 30 days from today. And then you got the which holiday. Would, which would be the next meeting, Sorry. after puts that would be the, the 17th. Puts us at the 3rd, 30 days puts us at Monday the 3rd of July. But that's a holiday. The holidays, that's a holiday. Well, I'm going to save the date for the 17th, July 17th. 17th. Mm -hmm. When's the second meeting in July? 17th. 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 Monday the 17th. Would you, would you rather have it, or would you rather have the, the uh, Actually, site we visit? Could, we could have the first meeting. If, if we're going to have the third as a holiday, we would have it on Monday the 10th. We'd have the first meeting on Monday the 10th. Yeah. We can do it then. Everybody available then? Dave? No. Sure that anyway. Yeah, it looks good to me. Okay. I was just looking at it, so Does that, work that would work. Yeah. Okay, so let's... I work for the property owner as well. Excellent. So if we were to reschedule that at 5? 5, 5 p.m. Okay, and then give us an hour to get back here, or a few minutes to get back here. Yep. Okay. Perfect. We'll see you then. Yeah, All right. Thank you so much. Thank yep. you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Now, Vince, did you hear anything from the people in town? I, I have not heard anything from them. But well, we still have to go on site visit. Oh, that's it. I'll reach out and let them know we're going to be there. I'd say it was the same day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll do it at the same time, and you, we have, I mean, the worst will happen is we'll have to start the select board, the original, the uh, select board meeting a little late, at six thirty. Yeah. That's but when you notice it, just put it out at six thirty or seven. Yeah. Put it out late. I'll put it out a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Chief requests approval for purchase replacement of Axon bottle cameras. Yeah, this is what we talked about at the last meeting, um, kind of on the spot. It wasn't enough notice. Yep. We, we put it back on this meeting, so Chief has all the details. So we have to replace three of our Axon body cameras. So what I have here is a quote from Axon. They do it over several year period of payments. Um, at the end of those 52 months, we're looking at a total of uh, $16,000, you know, roughly $16,000 to your take um, over those 52 months. And it's broken down over that period each year um, as a payment expected. Don't really have an option of replacing the cameras. We need them desperately. The guys now are having to come back mid shift and you know, replace their camera with someone else's because they're not holding a charge. Having to start their shift with no camera. 
just not optimal. Um, the good news is that due to our current agreement with the hotel, we've been generating some income with them. We're looking at probably over the last few months about close to nine thousand dollars that they are on the hook for us. Is there an interest to that uh, extended payment? No. No. You mean collecting interest over the time? No. Well, I mean, good. I was just thinking if you paid it up front or if, we, if there was interest to it, you could save a few bucks. I think yeah, we might have done that the last time we placed a couple of cameras because there was a, a benefit to that. The League of Cities and Towns is willing to cover some of the costs so, yeah. if we made a, a one time payment. We're not eligible for that grant currently because it's still in the fiscal year. Did they cut any break for turning in the old cameras by they, any chance? Axon is pretty much the only game in town, so they cut absolutely no breaks. No break. So, okay. Yeah. I think they gave us like three hundred dollars off. <laughs> and how soon are they able to um, ship the new units out? Probably within a month. Once we order, yeah, it'll be pretty quick. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we authorize the purchase of three body cams from Axion, Ax, Axon Enterprises. Uh, total cost of $16,336 over 52 months. Um, and this will be made as they're the only um, viable contractor available. Second. And now, is any of the ARPA funds left? Yes. There are ARPA funds left. And how, how long can we... We have until December of 24 to have the balance of that obligated. They not to be spent, but it has to be obligated. And I think right now we've got uh, right around 200,000, I believe. But, Left. yeah, or is it? I think it's less. Is it less? Yeah, yeah we're, we're trying to reconcile it and, uh, and make sure, but it's, it's somewhere in that range. It's probably, it probably is a little under. 180 or something. I'm showing, I'm showing like 170. 170. But there are other things that, you know, we haven't got prices on yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. So no matter what, we probably have enough if we had to use it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To cover that, yes, we would. And the good news is even if we didn't, the fact that there's no interest on it over the course of the five-year payments, uh, not five-year, but 52-month payments, um, that's good. Good question. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? So, I think I have a question. Sure. Well, do you have any cameras on, um, let's say, on the shelf? Spares? Nothing? There's nothing. Yeah, and, as it is, we have to share cameras. You're we sharing have cameras. Nine or ten cameras. We don't have that many. Mm -hmm. We have seven. Mm -hmm. I guess my question was going to be, was three going to be enough? I was going to say, it's going to be enough for, for, this time. Yeah, for the next year, probably. Okay. It's hard for me to predict uh, the original versions of Axon, the battery, the, the key issue is the batteries. And once the batteries go, there's, they're gone. There's no just replacing the battery. Right? Um, the original versions of Axon, the batteries last quite a bit. Um, but the newer versions are getting less and less time. Uh, perhaps because they do more than they originally did. I really don't know. But um, they, they probably have about a three or four year lifespan. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those Aye. Opposed, those opposed, motion carries. Um, town clerk requests for approval of purchase Nemeric module for digitizing listed pads. Yes, yeah, she was at the last meeting and, and gave some information and made a request on that. And so. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. So, what, what she's given me, she. First of all, most apologize she couldn't be here tonight. Um, 
there's the, as she said before, the $500 initial setup fee and an annual fee of $500 uh, for maintenance on that. Um, and she can have that probably available to go live if the board approves it within, within two weeks. Um, she does have um, money in her software support account, she said, of about $1,000 that covers that in the 23 budget and also in the 24 budget. So. You mean combined? No, no. Okay. It's, it's budgeted. There's a thousand in the 23 budget and another thousand in the 24 budget for that as well. That can be used. And that is her update. And I had an email discussion today with Rachel and with Diane. Uh, There's an article in BT Digger, sorry, Dave, uh, this weekend about uh, a new softer package the state is pushing on the town. It's called BT Pi. I don't know what that stands for, property something or other, through the tax department. Um, the article made it sounds like that would replace Nemeric, but I don't know. It's, but it doesn't sound like it's anything eminent. I'm not right. supposed to be starting to phase in, but um, I think you know, we can have this up and running. Vermont Pie. Vermont Pie. And that's making me hungry, but. Um, <laughs> Um, what was I going to say? Um, but assuming that we can get this up and running in you know a couple of weeks, um, I I think we still should move forward with this, even though we might be replacing it in a couple of years. I think it's worth a while. Two or three years from, um, and it's possible that we'll continue with that. Right? You know, it's still there's still a lot of pieces of this puzzle that haven't been completed. So, but at least for the next 12 months, we'll be able to use this because we're not high. We'll not, we'll not use it. We will not use it for tax bills at least for a year. So I'll make a motion that we authorize the purchase of the memory module for digitizing the lister cards online. And then I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, bridge sidewalk maintenance agreement with AOT. Okay, so again, in your package, at your leisure, there is a sample one from Guilford that I was able to get from the state of Vermont of what that looks like. I did attempt uh, to get one from East Montpelier. Um, that was originally recommended, but they can't seem to put their hands on it. I apologize for that. They're, they're, if they find it, they will send it to me. Uh, but the only example I've been able to get is this one from Guilford. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, again, I would, my recommendation is to look through it. Um, maybe I'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting for a decision. If we want to uh, move forward with this one, then I'll do one for well, draft one up and um, I mean, I fundamentally have problems with this. Um, the strategy of the Vermont Agency of Transportation is to promote walkability, multimodal, pedestrian, bicycle friendly infrastructure. Um, we see how much of a mess they made on Barry Montpelier Road doing this. Um, and now they're trying to hold it over us. I, I'm totally in favor of the sidewalk on the bridge. Um, I just think that since this is state infrastructure, it should be a state responsibility to do. And um, I'm not liking that they're trying to put this on the towns. We're not equipped for this, so if we were going to take this on, we're probably going to have to outsource it or somehow figure it in, which is another added cost to the town. Probably be a small cost, but everything adds up and everything gets more expensive over time, and it's just another thing to make that makes Berlin less um, affordable to live in. More direct to the point, I really have a problem with the wording of this particular contract. I mean, granted, it's not what ours would say, but probably very close. I think it's very ambi 
ambiguous. ambiguous. Um, it just says, you know, be responsible for maintenance of the sidewalk improvements, including but not limited removal of snow and ice. What, what does that mean? I mean, when I hire my plow guy every winter, I at least have an agreement with them. You know, two inches or more, you come out. Don't sand unless I call you to. This just says, including but not limited removal of snow and ice. Does that mean every time a state truck goes by, we got to go out and do it? Is that two inches? Is it, what exactly are we expected to do with this, with this contract? It's my, my concern specifically with it. Um, and you know, much the, then also, you know, it says for the maintenance. Is that even you know, in the future, as its infrastructure starts to crumble, we're going to be responsible for repairing and maintaining the concrete itself. Um, I, as what's been laid out to me, I'm not at all in favor of this. Um, I will make the motion now that we do not move forward on this, but I would be open to further discussions with the Agency of Transportation as far as any other options they may want to come up with, propose. I, I'm just surprised, Tor, that you didn't take and include uh, the state pushing snow on what we have to take care of. <laughs> well, I just figured we would just blow it back onto the, onto the bridge. Well, <laughs> I'm kind of wondering when they got out of the business of taking care of the, the sidewalks on the bridges. It wasn't many years ago that they were, they were shoveling all their bridges. To include the sidewalks. So, Mr. Chair, I just want to second Tor's motion uh, before we get into yeah. too much more discussion on it. Okay. For any further discussion? Anything, Dave? I, I, I agree with Tor on this thing. I don't think they should be putting it on the town. When, when it's a, it's it's the it's a state infrastructure even though it resides in the town of Berlin. I I talked with Vince this morning about it also it's pretty much the same was is like there's no other sidewalk down there. There's no crosswalks, there's no sidewalks, it's just sidewalk on the bridge and like it's kinda of difficult for us to maintain just a hundred feet of sidewalk in the middle of a snowstorm, and like, and then like Tor just said, like, what if damages if somebody hits the railing on the outside of the bridge? Or are we liable to repair it, or is the state going to repair it because it's on the sidewalk portion of the bridge? Uh, my my problem with it is it's just the, the timing. In other words, you have somebody who you hire or, or somebody who goes down there and cleans the sidewalk off, and five minutes later, the state plows the road. Correct. Correct. So all that, all that time and effort is wasted. Wasted. Oh. wasted. I will uh, reach out to AOT and, and let them know that uh, we'd like to have further discussions with them around this topic. I am totally in favor of the sidewalk on the bridge. Um, I, I don't want to make it, I don't want to um, give the residents there um, any, I don't say concern or anything, but I, I think there's got to be a better way of, of achieving this. Well, I mean, the reason everybody's using that sidewalk is because those mailboxes are right. over by the, by the fire department. If we find a, uh, a different place to locate them um, in the in the, in the uh, little burg of uh, Riverton, I think it'd be a better better uh, or at least part of a solution to it too. It'd be part of the solution. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, I'm going to say that's probably treasurer. Yes, 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 yes,
you, you have a document in your package? Is there well, she is a treasure. <laughs> <laughs> So I did email this to you as well as you've got it in your packets today. And what I'm trying to do is uh, from FY22, we rolled a lot of money into reserves that, that was, you know, we were going to spend in FY23, and we did. So I need to move those out of reserves. Uh, but also I'm looking to put in $418,000 into reserves, of which 305000 of that is equipment. And, uh, piece, and we are trying to build up an equipment fund so we can start paying cash for equipment. So that's the majority of it. And also, uh, there was money that we did not spend in the highway department that I would like to reserve to spend in FY24. So I'm asking the, uh, the select board to approve the reserves so that I can, we can do these in FY23. So the red amounts are the red amounts moving is, out, yes. and then the remainder is moving in. And the black amounts in. are what I want to put in to, to the reserves. And how much was remaining in the highway funds? that you uh, are going see. to utilize? Roadside mowing. Mm -hmm. That's uh, about 85,000. 85, approximately. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I moved the... We move. We authorize. we authorize the movement of $54,262.25 out of the reserves and that we further authorize to move $418,077.34 into the reserves based on the list provided by the treasurer. And I second that motion based on what we heard tonight from our treasurer. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Diane. Motion carries. Uh, town encampment policy. Okay, so in your package you will see one that uh, looks like this, which is one that has comments from um, Tour on, on this one. And you'll also have a copy of the original one as presented prior to those comments in there. Um, Again, I don't think we're ready to make a decision on this yet. Um, I think we need to look at it. I need to incorporate uh, Mr. Nelson's comments um, into another draft and present it to the board for review. Um, and again, if any of you others have uh, additional comments, just send them to me. Uh, we'll do another, I'll do another round of revising this. Uh, one of the recommendations uh, on this that I'd like to make if the board approves is where it refers to staff. Uh, we really don't have any staff that's out there, um, you know, looking at this. Um, the closest thing that we have is really our police. And I, I think I, uh, I have not talked to the chief, but I will before I make that change. But I'm going to recommend removing, changing the word staff to police. Um, typically, it's, you know, Brad does a lot of interaction with the folks out there and, is, is, and, and our police force, much, much more so than our huge staff. And then I will, uh, I will get that out to the board uh, once it's drafted with, with these changes as well. Put it on the minutes again for another review and discussion um, to try to move this forward. That sounds great. Um, most of my comments, I would say, are just editorial in nature, just minor yep. changing the wording stuff. Um, however, on, the, on my version on the page 13 of 16, I know we kind of discussed it at the last meeting gets back to the storing of yeah. stuff that we pick up and philosophically I'm not wanting us to get into the business of storing stuff however I'm not sure legally under the concept of unclaimed or uh, abandoned property that we can just dispose of it that easily so maybe more involved in that it may require reaching out to the league or our attorney um, to you know to see what the case precedent is on that I, I, there's a law student first year law student I know uh, he in his first semester he 
been talking to me about abandoned property and I glanced him over. So I asked him about it a couple of weeks ago as he's studying for his second semester and he confused me even more. But uh, it might be, might be why he only got a C on one of his classes. I don't know. But, um, I'll take an action to follow up on that. <laughs> okay, if you would be able to see and through the statutes what, what is described as abandoned property. And I'm right. sure there's a statute on what we have okay. to follow that somewhere. I'll, I'll see what that says and I'll, uh, I'll even try to incorporate change the language to incorporate that. That sounds wise. For, for the next review. <laughs> Just a motion to table to the next meeting. I make Some. the. I make the motion to table the discussion regarding the encampment response until the next meeting after the revisions and what we discussed this evening. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, support and approval, resolution for support and approval of this and signed for Route 302 sidewalk and bike lanes. Yep, that's just what we talked about the last meeting that Carla had, had explained. Um, there is a, a typo in the, uh, in the agenda. It should not say Route 302, it should say New Town Center. Um, this is a draft of that along with a map. Uh, again, I just, I just got these today so they, they were not in your package. This is the one I'd like signed if the board agrees to. That is a draft of the uh, the grant application, and that what's in yellow here is the uh, the sidewalks and the uh, bike path on the, on the drawing of the new town center. And again, this is uh, that resolution is for the board's approval for me to sign off on that. Basically, applying for the grant to move it forward. Doesn't say we have to accept it yet. Um, doesn't even say that we we have it yet. But there is a 20% match to that, uh, which is equivalent to should we get it would be $110,000 for the match for a total of $550,000 for that grant. What's your time frame, Vince, on needing to have it signed by us? Uh, I think it's Friday. Okay. The only reason I was asking is because of the typo on the um, agenda for tonight and the fact that residents wouldn't have known that it was specifically for this. They would have thought it was Route 302. That's the only reason I was asking. In addition to that, just to, to mention what else is out there that's being worked on for grants right now, um, there is a $2 million uh, loan with a $200,000 contribution uh, with the mall for the uh, relocation of that uh, of the new of the new road as well um, that we're looking at. It's it's a low interest loan, uh, basically that we would work with the mall to to obtain, but have a have a contribution towards that rebuild and reconstruction of the road as well. Um, also in that one. In that included in that two million is the uh, water system to the 3.8 acres would be included in that as well uh, of the new town property over there in, in that uh, loan. It's called a Leah loan or something. I can't remember the name of the loan. But that's that's also an addition to that that's being worked on. So. Yes, I did. Thank you. Well, since this is a I guess um, a motion for the resolution of support. I move that we adopt the resolution in support of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Grant Program application for the Newtown Center. And authorize, no, no, just, I'll just leave it there. Yep. 
Here a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Other, other than the, uh, the 302 error, we're just going to take the resolution as is, is, is no money. There's no, no, no money, money attached just to apply for it, basically, mm -hmm. to support the application um, of the board. It's for the, again, it's for the board to decide down there. Um, okay. any, um, other, any other discussion? And it'll come, again, if we're approved, it'll come before the board again. We'll put it before the board again for acceptance if we want to move forward with it at that time or not. Mm -hmm. right, so there's, there's that option as well at that point. Okay, those in, uh, any other discussion on this? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion carries. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-24 for payroll from May 7th, 2023 to May 20th of this year paid on May 24th of this year in the amount of $66,080.86. Also payroll warrant 23-25 for payroll from May 21, 2023 to June 3rd, 2023, paid on June 7th of this year in the amount of $66,153.97. And payable warrant 23-G22 with checks 22973 to 23044 for payables in the amount of $300,924.82 and the May Reconciled Bank Statements for the General Fund and the Sewer Water Divisions. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, approval of May 15th minutes of 2023. I make the motion to approve the regular select board minutes for Monday, May 15, 2023, as presented to us this evening. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, round table full? Nothing this evening. Thank you, Chair. Dave? I don't have anything this evening. Tour? I have uh, two items, Mr. Chair, uh, from the Public Works Board. Uh, the first is our longtime sewer contractor, Ron Mercier, uh, retired last week after 46 years of service to the town. Um, did a great job. We wish him well in retirement. Um, <coughs> now it's up to um, Public Works Supervisor Craig Pelletier. It's all on him. He's been up to been trained up to, uh, up to snuff and ready to go. Uh, the second thing, and I think Vince, you kind of had a chat with uh, Chair Rob Allen, uh, kind of about a philosophical as far as the future of the Public Works Board, uh, if that is to be needed as a separate uh, organization moving forward. Uh, I'm just going to bring it to your attention now that there might be more discussions on that, that coming will up be in the future. It'll be on an upcoming so. agenda. Uh, Mr. Allen will be invited in as well. Um, and, you know, the bottom line is, um, at this point, we feel that with, with Craig in place now, it's time maybe to uh, consider um, uh, removing, eliminating the board um, and start having those discussions. Okay. How long? How long has, has it been that we've had the supervisor, uh, the supervisor on for the public works board? We started uh, January first or January third. January one. Yeah. So this this is the sixth month. Okay. And previously, uh, terminated the contract for the water side with Simon operating probably in March or April, February. February. Yeah. Yeah. February. Slowly getting weaned off contractors. Right. Anything else, George? Uh, no, sir. Uh, Joe? I'm good, thank you. 
I have nothing. <laughs> Diane? Uh, Vince? Tim? Would you, oh, I'm so glad you asked. Would you like to speak uh, up? <laughs> no, uh, just a couple of things real quick. Uh, with the new phone system, right, uh, I know we've, in the past, we've always wondered, how many calls are we getting, and, you know, what's, what's the workload look like? We can, we can do that now with the new phone system. So just as an example, from just this side of the building, for the month of May, uh, the office had either incoming or outgoing 790 phone calls to the numbers on this side. And it can be broken down even further. Should the board ever want that, I can run reports now uh, to tell you that Diane had, whatever, 150 calls this week, um, whatever number um, you'd care to look at. We have that ability now uh, to have that available to us. It was over 1,400 uh, with the with the police um, on their side as well. So uh, there's, there's again, it just gives you an idea of the volume of calls coming in and going out of the offices now. So we can we can see that. You know, the clerk's office was the winner last month with 248 calls, just into the clerk's office. It was five more than the, the treasurer and the, and the assistant treasurer's office. They were that, 243. So. Now, those calls go down a little bit the more we digitize the town clerk's office? They probably will when the records go online because people don't have to call in for appointments and, and they schedule. Email, they email for appointments a lot. They, they do that as well. But they may go down. We'll, we'll know. We'll, again, the good news is we'll be able to tell by real numbers once that happens as we go. Okay. Um, and again, to the Chief's, to the chief's point, um, $4,935 was the, the bill last month uh, that he had mentioned for the Hilltop. It might be more than that. I'm the one that does the bill. Yeah. And I That's am just adding, his. You've got to add the admin yeah, fee to that. Admin, yeah. so, so it'll be more than that. Yeah. And there'll be another $400 for the admin fee. Are they staying current with those? No. That was what I was going to ask as well. Yeah, they paid the March bill, and I sent the April bill out probably about, well, about the beginning of May. I haven't seen that money yet. Okay. Let me know that. Um, just remind me because again, we're meeting with them every two weeks. Yep. I'm happy to yeah, uh, just, have him write me a check before I leave. Yeah, bring I was it back to the you. Chief about that today. You will have a list. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. That's wonderful. So yeah. So Vince. So, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I had a question on that. Uh, based on this extension that they allowed the 15 days, do we know what the number is going to drop to up there after the 15th? We have a pretty good idea, uh, Dave, and I'll, um, I'm going to give you a number off the top of my head from the meetings that I've been attending, but that's subject to change, um, but it should be pretty close. Uh, it looks like it's going to be about 30 people from the hilltop. It, it'll drop down to 30 or no, reduce by 30? It'll reduce by 30. By 30, okay. Right. Yeah, I was just curious because I know they're still working on trying to extend this program. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, but yeah, I was just curious what the what it should drop by. Yeah, it should be should be around thirty, I believe, for the first okay. go around. Then there'll be a second go around that'll be probably a little bit higher, um, depending. But that hasn't been confirmed yet to us. So, um, and then the one the, the last one I have is kind of a question. We kind of hit on it a little bit tonight um, at the next meeting with the board, like a uh, breakdown in status of what the ARPA funds are. We, sure. We've, we've yeah, started a reconciliation, and I think we are, we're around 170, between 170 and 175,000 um, still in the account for that. And again, they don't have to be spent, but they have to be obligated by December of 24. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be wise to look yeah, at. Just, and it's, it's time. I mean, we haven't done one in at least three mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, I'll make sure to get that on there. That's great. Is that it? That's it for me. Okay. okay. Um, any, you, any executive session? No, sir. Motion to adjourn? I make the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.